Okay, hello. Sweet Jenny Lee from sunny Tennessee. Uh, in the key of G. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate it first the basic chords, and then uh, and then we'll dress up the chords with the uh, moving chord. It's sort of like an Eldon Shamblin kind of type of moving chords. Uh, so let's go here. Move the camera in place. So basically, sweet Jenny Lee from Sunny Tennessee, you love her when you see sweet Jenny Lee. Each little bird is getting set to see merrily, sweet Jenny Lee. A certain something in her style, she's got a little bit of heaven in her smile. She'd say yes, sirree, that's good enough for me, sweet Jenny Lee. Okay, so that's the pr preliminary, right? That's the basic. So uh, some things you can do when you have that much of a G chord. Now I should say, all these moves are kind of applied to, uh, you know, one chord, possibly two chords together. And so really what you learn here you can use in countless other songs. Okay, so one thing is this is the, the root and this is the third. So if you start a line like this, there's G major. Two beats of G. D7 with the flat seven in the bass. C sharp diminished. And G major with the fifth in the bass. It's this chord, but I'm starting with I'm just fingering the middle strings and that'll sound like this okay so you're kind of going back the way you came almost up is no sorry up is now the band changes to D7 so you go to D7 with flat 7 on the bass and you can play the G major like this. I won't say why, I'll just do it. D7. So here we go. Okay, now you could just hang here, or do it again. Or Eldon Shamblin style, right? When you It's the third of the D D9, right? This is kind of like A minor. You could say it looks like a C or but D7 with the D in the bass. I typically put the fifth in the bass when I'm playing rhythm. But for a line's sake, we G, D7 with the fifth on the bass. This is functioning as diminished. Looks just like the D, but G with the third in the bass. Back the way you came. So that'll sound like this. Or that kind of a thing. So here we go with it. From the top, summarizing what we have so far. G. <laughs> the timing didn't feel right to me. That would be okay, but something else came to mind. One more time. So, um, you know, I'm kind of adapting what we have gone over and it's morphing into other things but you can use YouTube's uh, freeze frame to to get exactly what you want and we've we're covering everything it's just I keep throwing things in I'm having a distracted morning <laughs> so here's D7 a 
nice handy tool. D7. And this is basically Like the nine coming up to the third, but I would never have thought of that. I just physically grab it. There's two. Another way is is a nice little move. You know, use as you'd like. Uh, okay, let's pre move on. You may have noticed I did a line to get to the bridge, right? Not everyone would do this. And uh, so, a little disclaimer on it. Here it is. Uh, that's certain. So, uh, there's this pause where she's got a certain, right, certain is certain something in her style. So she's got... So I was looking for something to fill that with. So this is what's going to happen. This is a little information cerebral run here. We're going to go to an E minor. That's where we're heading for. We're going to hit B7 to E minor. This is kind of the target that B7 sets up. Presenting E minor. So, those two chords actually have a third partner in crime, and that's A minor. A minor 6 is nice, B7, E minor. Now, always when I'm practicing, sometimes on the bandstand, if I can do it fast enough, I'll say, what can I play instead of that chord? So, in, uh, or, if... Or, what inversion could I play other than the one I'm already sitting on? Could I start with the third in the bass or the fifth in the bass? Those are the two main strategies. And then I just physically and in the moment try to grab the one that's closest to the one I'm already playing, which tends to give you a nice, nice voice-leading approach, even if it's completely just spontaneous, <laughs> like you're just chasing the bird, man. <laughs> so here we go. That's what's going on. A minor 6, A minor with the 3rd in the bass, B7, E minor. So that happens from the G. So I didn't really... I did, in a sense, because this was functioning, the same notes were functioning as D7 if I went... Gives it that feel like you just pressed on the clutch and you want to shift. B7, okay? Moving on. E minor. I think in when I played the original, or uh, I went. Same idea as you're going one, two, three, or first, second, third note, right up the scale. So E minor, the filler note, the filler, the, G, the B7, and the other E minor. seven in between them. Now, I'm not hitting the high note on this. Sometimes I'll use the high note if I was, I'll just say I'm not on this one. If I did, in this case, I would just bar this finger. Okay? Because it's this sort of sound. It's not really, uh, I'm not playing the F sharp minor here. I, I mean, go by so fast, no one would care, but that sounds right. That sounds right in the with the others. Okay, I've probably stayed on that long enough. Okay, now, E minor is going to go to A7. Here, here's the generic version. She's got a lid in her style. Got a bit of heaven and a smile. Right, so we've already fancied this up. Right, so you could go with this E minor. You 
could hit that G sharp diminished to A7, but you're getting a little constricted, like uh, stiff up here on this part of the instrument, right? That I get a lot of text, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, um, so what I suggest maybe trying to do is start heading down, okay? So here we go. Uh, kind of a bigger jump than I like to physically make I'm thinking about it. You could just one finger it. Or that's E minor 7 with the flat 7 in the bass. That's your A9. E minor, A7. What's really happening is just A7. But, nice little drill, right? Anytime you have one of these, it's a little companion, which is technically 2 5 or E minor to A. But I just think of it physically. If I can do this, I can almost always do that. If I can do this, I can almost always do this. If I can, hold, if I can do this, I can almost do this. If I can do all those, why not do them all together? And it goes on. It doesn't have to be limited to that. It's that. That's the thinking, though. Okay, so we had E minor, right? A7, or an A9, right? Through the bass. E minor, fifth in the bass. A7, the root in the bass. C9, ah, uh, sorry, sorry. A9, through the bass. D. flat seven on the bass. It looks like G major. I'm kind of thinking it is something else, but uh, I I guess it's functioning as G major. It's another thing you could do, if you know you're ending on D, I like and throwing the diminished in there. Let's try it again. I'll just sort of blast through it here. Two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Alright, so I'll do it from here. Just kidding. Here's one more to go in that same series, as it were. For your G, right? We're, we're on the the first part of the tune, not not the chorus. G major. This line is going to happen. This happens. I do this all the time. I throw this into solos and anywhere I can in chords when I'm buying time. Or. Oh, sorry. <laughs> This is, looks like G major. This looks like B minor, but it's functioning as a G major 7. This is functioning as G major 6. It looks like E minor 7. I uh, carried away. Uh, G, sorry. Sweet Jenny Lee from sunny Tennessee. You love her. Another good point. If we're going to go to this E minor, and 
I've just said you could do A minor, B7, E minor. If you're going to chunk on the B7 and you want to do this type of an idea, but over B7, it would be the outside chords are physically, they look the same. The one in the middle is not like D7 shape, you know, like this. It, it would get, go by so fast, probably no one would notice. No one would care. But if you want to be spot on, it's, that's the third. Uh, how about that? Eldon does this quite a bit. El Eddie Lang too. They. Uh... Okay, let me try it. If you can do -do 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 -do, play those arpeggios fast enough, it sounds cool. I'll try it again. coming by and bothering me. Darn robot. One more time. I don't do this one. But I like it. There we go. You got a custom riff just for you. <laughs> um, okay. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, I'll do one more idea was on the minor. You could play it there. So it looks like a big stretch, uh, but you get used to it pretty quick. Basically, this is where the minor, this is where the minor lives here, the E minor. It looks like this, just up the 12th fret. So this is the root the fifth and the flat third. Major third is here. Flat third. A cool move. And it looks a lot like the thing we did over earlier on D. So B7, E minor, A7. Right, starting with the third in the bass, or you could do the flat seven in the bass, but a third in the bass, why not? All right, a lot of good.